In this video, you're going to learn what is the roles and responsibilities play, the pre-work necessary to run the play, guidance and tips on how to facilitate the play, and how you should follow up after running the play. A lot of teams think they have a clear understanding of who's doing what on their team. But if you ask different people, the answers are also often quite different. A lot of teams don't know, actually, that their roles and responsibilities are not clearly defined. Or even worse, they have a totally different understanding on the responsibilities of a specific role. So here are some questions for you. Are the responsibilities clear for each person on the team? Are roles clearly defined and has everyone on the team the same understanding of it? Or you think there are no gaps at all in terms of roles and responsibilities? If you think your team should probably talk about these things, here's something that can help you. The roles and responsibility play from the Atlassian team playbook. After running this play, you have a common understanding on the different roles in your team and their responsibilities. And it's always good to talk about these things and get on the same page, right? No matter whether you're a new team currently in the forming stage or you're a well-established team working together for years, this play will help you. You probably know this, but it can cause quite some tension when team members have different expectations for a specific role. It's definitely a good idea to talk about it and this play helps you foster that conversation. You might also find out that you're missing a role or also that some responsibilities in your team are not really defined. The roles and responsibility play brings everyone on the same page. For this play, bring your team together, whether online or in person. Make sure you clearly explain what your team can expect from this session before running this play. Also, the time that is needed to run this play depends on the number of people that participate in it. It usually runs for around 60 minutes, but you should plan more if you're actually more than five people. But it can also be exhausting to run a long session and talk about a lot of different roles and responsibilities in just one go. So here's a rule of thumb. If you're more than nine team members, break the play up into smaller one hour sessions. All right, if you want to follow along as we dive into things, click the link below uh, to access the roles and responsibility play. It explains all the steps in much more details. Start the play by reviewing the team's mission to remind everyone what the team's overall responsibility is. It's important that you're on the same page about why you exist on the team. I can also recommend to run the team poster play, also from the Atlassian team playbook before this one, to get a shared understanding of what your team is doing. Now, write down all the roles in your team. Keep it focused on roles, not on people, right? Um, one person actually can have multiple roles or multiple persons can have the same role. Like one team member can be a project manager and a programmer. This makes actually two roles. So just write down the roles. Each team member should now individually write down the responsibilities of the roles identified. It should be about what you think are the responsibilities of this role. If you're working in a cross-functional team, you might not know all the responsibilities of your teammates. That's okay, but try to fill it out as good as you can. When everyone is done with writing down the responsibilities, share your notes. Go through the list roll by roll. And this is the interesting part. There can be quite some surprises here. And that's great, really. It means that there were unknown expectations of a specific role. Encourage everyone to share their thoughts. It's important that the team create a shared understanding on the responsibilities of each specific role. I can recommend that you might want everyone to write down their own responsibilities before the meeting. So set a baseline for the kinds of responsibilities they take on. And here's another tip. You probably also find responsibilities that you can't assign to a role. Great job! You identified some gaps. There are probably reasons why no roles want to accept this as their responsibility. Try to resolve those gaps during the session. And with all of your discussions. 
It's all right if you agree to disagree. Capture the problematic responsibilities and run an extra meeting to dive deeper into it. You should repeat this play, let's say every three to six months. New roles might be added to your team and responsibilities might have changed. With a roles and responsibilities play, your team gets a clear understanding of what everyone is responsible for. This means less discussions and conflicts within your team. Thank you.